This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zalma on Insurance. Today we're going to go a little off from our normal and speak about why a court in Quebec, Canada followed the rules that are confusing people with homeowners policies in the United States and require that an owner-occupant actually occupy a dwelling for coverage to apply. In Deng C. versus Industrial Alliance Assurance Auto et Habitation, the Court of Appeal for the Province of Quebec, in an opinion in French, a language I don't speak, but which was fortunately interpreted, provided that Dang was the sole insured under a policy which covered the owner-occupant and your dwelling. Respondent had insured the house since 2012, and May of 2018 the house was damaged by fire. During its investigation, the insurer concluded that the appellant had sporadically traveled to the United States from 2013 to 2016, and that she had been living in the United States since February of 2016 without any intention to reside in Quebec. The house was, however, continuously occupied by family members. At trial, Dang argued that she had every intention of returning to Quebec. In addition, she no longer had automobile insurance in Quebec, had acquired a new residence in Texas with her spouse, tried unsuccessfully to sell her house and obtained her permanent resident status and a green card in the United States. The insurer established with two independent insurance company representatives that they would not have renewed the policy had they known that the insured did not have any intention of coming back to live in the house. According to Dang, occupant means a person who exercises either personal or through another person a real right on property without necessarily having a lease. As such, according to Dang, the Superior Court judge erred in concluding that she did not occupy her residence at the time of the fire. Well, the Court of Appeal noted that there was no ambiguity in the policy and that the object of the contract was to ensure the owner who occupies the residence. Dang did not fulfill the condition for at least two years prior to the fire. The court concluded that the owner-occupant must be interpreted according to its ordinary meaning and in a manner which an ordinary person who seeks insurance would understand. The Court of Appeal also added that it would not intervene in the decision of the trial judge to retain the testimony of the two independent insurance company representatives to support the decision to annul the policy. The Court of Appeal concluded that an insurer may refuse to indemnify an insured if following a change of circumstances the risk which, the risk which materialized is no longer covered at the time of the loss. In such a case, the will of the insurer to never cover such a risk, it applies and is not an aggravation of the risk. In Canada, much like the United States, the insurance policy must be analyzed and one must identify what risk of loss the insurer had the intention of insuring. Once the object of the insurance is identified, the court determines if the insurer had manifested the intention of insuring the risk, which materialized, that is, a house not occupied by the insured. The word occupant adds to the word owner the notion of living in the house insured. Furthermore, the expression, your dwelling, confirms the meaning which the insurer intended on giving to its contract, which, until February of 2016, conformed to what Dang wanted to insure, her house in Troy Rivieres, or Three Rivers. The insurer satisfied its burden of establishing that the insured was no longer 
the owner occupant of the house. The risk materialized was no longer what the insurer wanted to insure. The Court of Appeal further underlined that the insurer clearly demonstrated that it would have put an end to the contract had it been informed of the situation of unoccupancy. In my opinion, our neighbors in Canada agree with the courts in the U.S. that a policy that insures a resident's premises and requires the insured to occupy the residence for coverage to apply. This is not an exclusion, even if it acts like one. Insurance is a contract of personal indemnity. It does not insure the dwelling structure. It only insures the insured person against the risk of loss of the dwelling. If the insured, like Ms. Dang, no longer lives in the dwelling, and this insured moved countries and became a permanent resident of Texas, nowhere near Quebec, she was not living in the home in Quebec, and therefore the risk insured was changed, and she could not recover anything under the policy. Americans with homeowners' policies face the same situation. If I left my home and moved to Texas like Ms. Dang, my California homeowners' policy would not insure me against the risk of losing the California house in which I live unless I advise the insurer that I had moved, changed my coverage from a homeowner's to a rental policy. Ms. Dang, on the other hand, hid the change from her insurer and lost. She got nothing for the fire and received nothing from the policy that she had paid premium on because she changed the risk of loss that the insurer had agreed to insure. This video was adapted from my blog, Zalma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zalma.com slash blog. You can also subscribe and receive notice of these blog postings at least five a week, sometimes more. You can also subscribe to the videos on YouTube and rumble.com or to the podcast, which is available anywhere. And I would appreciate it if you subscribe to the YouTube or the rumble videos. And also, if you found them to be useful, tell your friends and colleagues so that they can also subscribe and view the videos and blog postings, and you might also be interested in subscribing to my Substack publications and my Locals community where you can receive special insurance claims and insurance coverage productions that are only available to those who subscribe for either $50 a month a year or $5 a month. Thank you for your attention.